In this presentation, the fixation of a distal humerus fracture, AO classification 13C3, will be shown using VA LCP distal humerus plates 2.7-3.5 in a perpendicular plating configuration. These plates are available in both titanium and stainless steel. The VA LCP locking holes in the plate accept VA locking screws which are coloured purple, locking screws and cortex screws. Following this exercise, you should be able to perform the surgical approach and exposure of the fracture zone, to describe the steps to attain anatomical reduction, and apply the distal humerus plate system to a 1-3-C3 fracture. To obtain sufficient exposure of the fracture, the patient is placed either in a lateral decubitus position or a prone position. The prone position is the preferred option. A short arm support is used so that the surgeon may sit. Care must be taken to ensure that the elbow can be flexed at least to an angle of between 110 and 120 degrees. The skin incision is marked. Because of the foam, start higher to make a straight incision, then curve around the olecranon and then back down the crest of the ulna. The incision is made down to the fascia of the triceps and down to the ulna. The self-holding spreaders are inserted to hold back the soft tissues. The fracture of the distal humerus is visible with a proximal diaphyseal metaphyseal fragment, an ulna fragment, a radial fragment and an intermediate fragment. The next step will be to perform an osteotomy of the proximal ulna in order to visualize the intra-articular component. Spreaders are applied distally to allow visualization of the proximal ulna. The ulna nerve is identified. It may be elevated with a sling at the ulna epicondyle if necessary. A V-shaped or chevron osteotomy will be made. The osteotomy is marked with its center at the base of the coronoid process where there is ample cartilage. The oscillating saw is used and the bone is cut almost completely across. The separation is completed with an osteotome to avoid a loss of substance at the articular level. The proximal ulna is reflected to give an excellent view of the fracture and the intermediate fragment. The next step is the articular reduction. The instruments needed are the 2.5 mm drill bit, the universal drill guide 3.5, the asymmetric reduction forceps with points and the large reduction forceps with points. To allow an easier application of the asymmetric reduction forceps, a 2.5 mm hole is made in the radial cortex. The radial column fragment is reduced and held temporarily with the reduction forceps. The next step is temporary fixation of the reduced fragment using K-wires. When positioning the K-wires, it is imperative that the definitive position of the plate is taken into account to avoid any conflict between the plate position and the K-wire position. The forceps are now removed. The intermediate fragment is reduced next. 
It is positioned into the articulation, reduced anatomically to the stabilized radial column fragment, and preliminarily fixed in position with a K wire. The final fragment is reduced to the already reconstructed distal humerus. The large pointed reduction forceps are applied across the fragments. A 2.5 mm hole is made in the ulna column for the asymmetric reduction forceps. The forceps are applied. Two K wires are inserted to hold this fragment in position. The transarticular fixation K wire is inserted further. Both forceps are now removed. The VALCP elbow plating system offers three main double plating configurations for the distal humerus. In this presentation, perpendicular plating with lateral support will be shown. The dorsolateral plate with lateral support is used with the medial plate. The screws of the lateral support target the articular block. Instruments to insert 3.5 mm cortex screws are the 2.5 mm drill bit, the universal drill guide 3.5, the depth gauge for screws 2.7 to 4.0 mm, and the small hexagonal screwdriver with sleeve. Instruments to insert 2.7 mm variable angle locking screws are the 2.0 mm drill bit, the VALCP drill sleeve 2.7, the depth gauge for screws 2.7 to 4.0 millimeters, the star drive screwdriver shaft SD8, the 1.2 newton meter torque limiter, and the handle for torque limiters. Application of the dorsolateral plate with lateral support. Position the dorsolateral plate on the distal humerus. Use the 2.5 mm drill bit with the 3.5 universal drill guide to pre-drill the bone through the DCU portion of the elongated plate hole through both cortices. To set the screws in a neutral position, press the drill guide down. Determine the required length of the cortex screw using the depth gauge. After tapping, if needed, Insert the appropriate 3.5 mm cortex screw using the hexagonal screwdriver. Do not fully tighten the screw. Insert the VALCP drill sleeve 2.7 into the central variable angle locking hole, ensuring that the drill sleeve tip keys into the cloverleaf portion of the plate hole. Use the 2.0 mm drill bit to drill to the desired depth. The fixed angle end of the drill sleeve ensures that the drill bit follows the nominal trajectory of the locking hole. Remove the drill sleeve and use the depth gauge to measure the screw length. Use the star drive screwdriver shaft to insert the 2.7 mm variable angle locking screw the 1.2 newton meter torque limiter connected to the handle for torque limiters must be used for the last few turns of the screw to avoid damaging the threads of either the screw or the plate hole. Two more variable angle locking screws are inserted in the distal plate holes and a cortex screw inserted in the most proximal plate hole. Position the plate on the medial ridge slightly dorsal to the intermuscular septum. Choose a plate position that allows the longest possible distal screws. Insert a 3.5 mm cortex screw through the DCU portion of the elongated plate hole in the neutral position. Take care to avoid the lateral plate and screws.
place the funnel-shaped end of the VALCP drill sleeve in the second most distal plate hole and drill a hole at the desired angle to cross the fracture fragments. Insert the appropriate 2.7mm variable angle locking screw using the standard technique. The screw must be long enough to reach the far fragment. Make sure the last turns are made by hand with the 1.2 Newton meter torque limiter. A variable angle locking screw is inserted through the most distal plate hole. A variable angle locking screw is inserted through a plate hole in the shaft of the plate. All the K-wires are now removed. Use the funnel-shaped end of the VALCP drill sleeve to insert variable angle locking screws through the plate holes in the lateral support. The screws of the lateral support target the articular block. The olecranon is reduced and secured with two 1.6mm K-wires inserted parallel to each other through the olecranon and into the ulna. Position the plate on the dorsal aspect of the proximal ulna. The triceps tendon may need to be split in order to apply the plate. Insert a 3.5mm cortex screw through the DCU portion of the elongated plate hole in the neutral position using standard technique. Place the funnel-shaped end of the VALCP drill sleeve in one of the proximal plate holes and drill a hole at the desired angle through the olecranon and into the ulna. Insert the appropriate 2.7mm variable angle locking screw. Make sure the last turns are made by hand with the 1.2 Newton meter torque limiter. Insert a second variable angle locking screw in the proximal section of the plate and insert a cortex screw in the most distal plate hole. Remove the K-wires. The model shows that optimum reduction of the fracture and plate placement have been achieved. You should now be able to perform the surgical approach and exposure of the fracture zone, to describe the steps to attain anatomical reduction, and apply the distal humerus plate system to a 1-3-C-3 fracture.